welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and you can call me Wolf or Mr. Turner. I don't care what you call me. And I'm with my co-host, Mushu, the one and only. You didn't jump on as quick as you usually do. Usually I, was, just... I was giving you a little time because you're usually so rude. I thought you were Oh rude my God, I am not rude. I don't dude. know. What are you but... talking about? <laughs> Uh, it's just me today. Anthony decided to be lazy and uh, no. Anthony's in the studio. You want to say hi, Anthony? Yeah. You could s- go to the mic and say hi. He's talking all kinds of crap about the listeners right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, now he's it. Yeah, y'all should hear me. Y'all mm. suck. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I, I'm just telling. I'm just saying what Tony uh, told me to say. Exactly. Tony gets people in trouble with his big mouth. What? <laughs> so we have guests tonight, but before we introduce them, uh, real quick here, we got to tell you, we have a live stream that we do every Friday and uh, Sunday. Friday, we always have a guest without fail. And then Sunday, we have stories that we retell that people send in or vice versa. It's one of those things. But we always have a guest uh, on the live. And we, this is the Thursday uh, rendition and we have some guests in the studio, which I am thrilled. I am really absolutely over the moon to interview uh, these guests. And so we have a Patreon. We got to get that out of the way. It's $10 all the way up to $50. And each tier has a different swag level. We have talked about it uh, ad nauseum. I'm not going to get into it. Suffice it to say, the, the bigger the, the Patreon, the bigger the swag. You will get autographed books from many different authors, and actually, hopefully, my guest that's in here tonight, we will make a deal because I want to get his books and give them to you. So for these particular shows, we're going to drop them on YouTube, like we always do, and then we're going to put the link on the Facebook group, on uh, Paranormal Roundtable Facebook group, and then you can go to that page and leave a comment, and you might get to get to win one of Jerry Williams's books. So that is what we're doing. That is the giveaway. So we, without further ado, I want to get started here. Uh, oh, one other thing. If you, What is your information? Oh, if you want to find me, you can find me at PRT Mushu on Facebook and uh, Instagram. And if you want to email me, it's mushuprt at gmail.com. I don't, I don't know why anybody would want to, but that's up to you. I mean, if you're into that kind of weird stuff, I don't know, talking to this guy. You want but, to talk to me about how horrible Wolf is? I mean, I would understand. <laughs> probably. He's probably over there telling them that make him drink out of the dog's bowl or whatever. But that's, if you, you want to join my, my choice, grand though. conspiracy against Wolf, then just, just let me know. <laughs> Email me. So, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. I mistreat Tony because it's out of love. I'm trying to make him be a more civilized human being. No, right? what it was was that I was just mistreated growing up, and he likes to make me remind myself of my childhood memories. Oh, and- my God. <laughs> To bring me back to my younger That's days. That's horrible. And then he reminds <laughs> me of an angry dad who did things to deliberately make me mad. And and so that's how our friendship works. It works. It works. But here's the thing. Josh Turner 940 on Instagram and then on Facebook, just all you got to do is let me know that you actually uh, like the show, that you're a listener of the show. Otherwise, I can't approve your friend request because I, won't, I don't know who you are. And we have had some problems with with trolls and things like that. So... That being said, we're going to get started. Now, let me introduce my guests. I will, ladies first, Ella, and you go by Ella, right? Or Tracker E. Yes, Lead Tracker E or lead Ella. Lead Tracker E, yes. And Jerry Williams. How it Jim Chikma. So what does that mean? But that that means, uh, hello, how are you doing? And that's in Choctaw? Uh, yeah, I would say, how it Jim Chikma, Chata, Nopa, Vomoma, Suba, Pelichi. Wow. And that would be Suba Polici is my traditional name, or in the Spanish language, it would be called my tribute nombre. But um, yeah, I am of the Choctaw Nation, and uh, that whole phrase was just to say, hello, how are you doing? Uh, My name is Lead Horse. Um, That's the traditional um, English version but the name means to carry them or to care care for them. Um, but I, and that's in the Indian world. It's a it's a different kind of world. It's a it's a, not a s- social world as far as what we've been uh, raised in. It's the Indian world is a little different. Um, it's more of the uh, traditions, the ceremony, but it has to do with every tribe and the protocols that we use to greet each other. Uh, we always speak in the language first to establish that we are who we are. And then uh, we eventually go back into uh, whatever language 
uh, that we're speaking. Uh, maybe Spanish or English, or um, I speak a little bit of uh, French and a little bit of German, um, Choctaw, Spanish, and also ancient languages and symbols. I read symbols and languages like that. Um, but it, it's just a greeting that we do, uh, especially in ceremonies or when we're greeting new people or other tribes. Um, that's just how we establish who we are. Yeah, and you've been you've traveled all over. Yeah, I've traveled the world, um, Honduras, uh, Turkey, Canada, all the states, and I, I know pretty much every tribe, or they know me um, of the things that I used to do. I was a big um, they would call them activists, but we called call ourselves protectors and guardians of the land, protectors of the water. Um, I was also the last man standing at Standing Rock. Uh, we were betrayed there by other tribes, but we were there to um, protect the water for the children. And but my name, uh, and since I came back into like the English kind of world, I had to revert back to Jerry Williams, um, and that's to get into. Uh, like the tribal affiliations and the tribal government um, system, I guess you would say. But And I'm also running for council uh, for District 7 of the Choctaw Nation, and then I'll be running for the chief of the Choctaw Nation very soon also. How does that work? Now, they, ha they have to the – the other tribe members have to vote for you? Yeah, it's, it's uh, like a, the English um, voting system. Um, but like District 7, Pushmataha County is the biggest one in Oklahoma, and that's where I'm from, and uh, I was raised there, um, set, you know, records, records there, um, everyone knows me in those areas, and I know everyone there also, so that reminded me of uh, this woman, Her uh, she's with uh, another YouTube group called, um, Lady of the Woods. I don't know if to me. I mean, I don't know how big her channel is, but she had moved to um, just up the road from where we live, and it, my whole family lives in that area. And she was on a cast one night and saying that the Indians are saying. I mean, the Indians around here they're they're saying that they're um, forest people, that they're um, people, and that they're they're not all bad. And so I had a discussion with her, and I was telling her, no, that's not what we're saying. They're predators, and every one of them are. And she goes, well, the Indians here, I said, no, no, You're talking no. about Bigfoot. Yeah, and I was saying, no, those Indians you're talking about are my family. They're my cousins, my nephews, or you know, people I was raised with. So all those Indians that you're saying are saying that, I know that's a lie because I know every one of them. And they're actually my family and cousins and in that area that she's at. So when I hear, you know, like we were talking about earlier, when people say, well, the Indians say this, Indians say that, we always say, what Indian? What tribe? Give us a name. Give yeah, us a, specifically. Yeah, and we will contact that tribe, and we will set them straight. We'll talk to them. We'll let them know that these are predators. There was uh, another group um, who wanted me to take back um, one of the remarks I made about the Lakotas, because they stabbed us in the back at Standing Rock. And I said, no, I said, I was there. I know exactly what happened and how we were betrayed. And um, they and they got on the subject of, well, um, we have a elder or, no, that our people say that these uh, Bigfoots are people. And so I'm saying, okay, well, tell me what elder told you that? And I'll get a hold of them and I'll talk mm -hmm. to them. And they said, after they wrote for it, you could see that they were writing and writing and stop, mm -hmm. writing, writing and stop. And after about 10 minutes of doing that, the message came up. It said, have a good day. <laughs> I, I want to say something about that because we get that all the time. And we get that from people. And I gotta say, there's a certain demographic, a certain gender in a demographic that kind of tends to, to use that. Mm -hmm. and, and I just take it with a grain of salt. And they always want to say, well, the Native Americans call them. And I'm like, there's a million different, like, you cannot sit here and tell me 
that, that they all agree on and that they all are that no, maybe one says that, but like you said, you could easily just go and talk to the elders and yep. say, Hey, you know, like, I mean, I had a friend who was Ute and he was, his opinion was very much like you. And now where he's from, you know, he was very adamant that they're, and they believe in the skinwalker and they believe that the Navajos, there's a curse. And they're not supposed to be living in certain areas, and they do believe in Bigfoot. And he's never told me that they were friendly, fuzzy, forest giant people. He, the way he was told was that they were like, they were giants, like they were large giants, but that they were aggressive predators and they would kill you. There was none of this cuddly, fuzzy, whatever. And most of the time when I talk to a native, they don't say that. Uh, I did work with the guy who, his name was Phil, and he was actually Chippewa. And he worked for me at the nightclub I, I was at. And he he was probably the only Native American I've ever talked to who didn't really have much of an opinion on Bigfoot one way or the other. And he was like, but he did, living up in Wisconsin, he had heard of Dogman and stuff like that. He goes, that's something that my grandparents might be able to tell you. You know, and he was full-blooded. But uh, yeah, I just kind of always like, and while we were talking about the, the Bigfoot Dogman thing, we had a bartender who... Claims she was Cherokee because that seems to be the the go to for anybody who's not yeah, really native. Everybody's Cherokee. They're always Cherokee, yeah. And so she's like, "Well, my grandmother was a Cher was Cherokee," and I'm like, "Okay, here we go." She walked the trail of tears, and then I'm like, "On them," and then she goes, and she told me that they were they were peaceful. They're just like we are, and I'm just rolling my eyes, like nauseated. I said, "Yeah, okay, you are literally not even. You're blonde hair, blue eyed." Well, you okay. didn't hear? And it's not, she wasn't like, she wasn't like full platinum blonde, but she had dirty dishwater blonde hair and she had bluish green eyes. And I said, I really, I'm not saying that you're not native, that it's not possible, but me, like having somebody who in my ancestry who was Comanche, I don't go around claiming I'm Comanche. You know, I just say that that, that heritage is there, but I'm not the authority on that. But some of these people, they seem to do that and they want to pick and choose uh, whatever their paradigm is, they they want to use the Native Americans as that's their, well, the Native Americans said this until it's something that they don't agree with. Yeah. And, and it, it's always a blanket term too. It's like, okay, what tribe? Let's specify about exactly who you're talking about instead of saying it all as like, ooh, ooh, ooh. The Native Americans. It's like me yeah. going and saying like, oh, Asia believes that monkeys <laughs> can fly. <laughs> Yeah, like, because oh, you're and, Vietnamese. Yeah. And we do we do find that offensive whenever mm, we hear it. Oh, it's extremely offensive. Because people are saying this is what we said. Yeah. Talking and for you. Speaking for you, yeah. And we're saying no, that's not what we're saying. In our language, they're called death, black death, big hairy stink monkey man or big hairy stink raccoon man. We don't have any good words for them. They've taken our children, our people. We've been at war with them forever. Mm -hmm. Uh and with, they still take people, and they still will. So they're not anything good. They're only predators, and we're still at war with them. Yeah, and, and, and I believe that that goes back, and now we've talked about this off camera, off air, because uh, we're friends, but we've talked about this, and it, it was, to, to me, it goes back to, it's biblical. Yep. I, like I said this before, folks, I think Genesis 6 I think Enoch is the long version of that, and I think it tells a lot uh, about the archons of fallen, who they are, what they were, what they did. Now, what I thought was interesting, and folks, y'all probably already know this about me. I started off by sparring with Jerry, <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you that how we met. And this is actually a funny story because some of the, my best friends in the world uh, who are probably listening right now, Squid, Jack, you guys, y'all didn't like me at first. R.S., y'all met him tonight at Spinners. We didn't like oh, each other at first. my stepdad, Chad. He's Chad? His stepdad, I mean, he got into, almost got into a fight, like a physical altercation, but that was because of his girlfriend. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, even she Scorp, got thrown that, out. That you guys Scorp, Scorp hated me. Yeah. And he's, a, he's my best friend now. So <laughs> my best relationships I've ever had have always started off with somebody who I was sparring with. So Jerry, the, what, I, what I like about Jerry, and I'll say this, and I, I'm going I'm to say this. The cover of my Bigfoot book, the Bigfoot Phenomena, it was a picture dr drawn by Sibylla Irwin. Buster Archie is a really good artist and really nice guy, one of the greatest guys ever, Charles Hamill. That was based on his encounter, but it's not in my book. Now, Sibylla, it was her artwork, so she said, you can go through here and pick out what you want, whatever. So 
we, you, Tony, and Anthony, Nelly, we all kind of got together. We said, we like this one. Yeah, we kind of chose like our favorites. And then, and then I showed Ken and Barton and, and Sibylla, and we all kind of talked about it as friends. And they were like, that's a good one. And so it was drawn, though, based on Charles Hamill's account. Now, I didn't know that it was somebody's picture. And then I, I go onto Facebook, and there's this argument popping off between Jerry and Barton. And they're sparring, and they're like, he's like, that picture is my friend's picture. Now, you were defending your friend. Yeah. So I reached out to Jerry after I, I called you a dummy because I'm like, dude, that was let that we were given permission, dummy or something. And then I felt bad, and so I just said, who is this? Who's this Jerry Williams guy? So I went ahead and I looked at your profile, and then I started looking at some of your stuff. And then I, you have a YouTube, right? So I went to your YouTube and I watched some videos, and I said, I like this guy. <laughs> He's actually got some good stuff, and I agree with a lot of what he says. So then I reached out to Jerry. Now you have a reason to be suspicious of people. So naturally, he was kind of like, what do you want? Like, who are you? You were kind of standoffish. And I said, look, I know I'm the guy that called you the dummy, whatever. But I said, but I was defending my friend Barton. And, you know, just can you reach out? Can, can I reach out and talk to you? Can we talk? Whatever. And you said, okay, g- give me some time. So you checked what you did, what you're supposed to do. You did your due diligence and you checked with Charles. And me and Charles had been talking. And Charles told me his story uh, one day. I was sitting in my study in the afternoon. I was captivated. And it is an amazing story. Now, I want to tell his story but it's not mine to tell. Charles wants to come on the show and tell it. So that's what's going to happen. Charles is going to tell that story. But the beauty of this is that I got to meet Jerry and Jerry uh, and me started talking. And then the next thing you know, we were all in a three-way conversation with Ella and you. And I was like, this is awesome. And so at some point we had decided we were going to get together. And then you guys surprised me and y'all were like, Hey, we're in Texas. We're not. We're a few hours away. Can we come? I said absolutely. So you got a hotel, and now we're here in the studio, and we're recording in the middle of the night. Um, so that's that's how that went down. So if anybody wonders how we met or how we whatever, as typical wolf fashion, I started off like you know not always on the best of terms, but we ironed it out because people like me and people like Jerry do get attacked regularly. And I'm telling you right now, absolutely, just like Barton said, he's like, every day there's somebody attacking him. There's somebody attacking Jerry, somebody attacking me. It's because of how we believe. And it's because, and I hate to just be snarky about it, we're right. And I'm not trying to be ugly or rude or mean. But when we sit here and we tell you, this is the way it is, this is the way it is. And I'm so sick of people speaking for Native American people. And I thought this was a good opportunity for you to say what you have to say. Now, Jerry, you wrote a book. You and you and Ella together. You co-authored a book. So, w- w- tell us about that. Uh, well, we we designed the book to where even the child could read it to understand what we're saying. Uh, we even put, um, which is good for most adults nowadays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we put hand-drawn sketches by Lee Trackery. She's she's one of the best artists. But we designed the book to save people's lives, to give them the information of what they're looking at. Um, I believe uh, Tony was out outside, even just outside. Uh, we were looking at for prints, and we was looking at the trees and the pull downs and things. And we there's there's pull downs right outside the door here. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you look at how they're pulled and maneuvered and and fit in these things, uh, we talked about an ice storm. An ice storm, they would just droop and fall and break. Mm-hmm. But this was bent over backwards, hooked in there, weaved in between it. And there's no way even a wind storm would have done that. Yeah. If you look at how it fell, man, there's no natural way for it to fall that way, especially when you look at there's multiple branches that are kind of looks like they're stuffed in between a crack of a, like, of a tree. Here's something I want to ask you. you know, and it's unfortunate. We were eating dinner earlier with Scorpion, and but he, he was in a lot of pain. He was in the hospital. So he hurt his back. But he had a question, and, and I have a question for you. When we were working at a job site years ago called Travis House, it's no longer there. And I think Willie Nelson, the, the singer, he actually bought that property and then they demolished it. Now I think he resold it. Now it's a high rise, of course, because everything is. But there was a tree and we both witnessed this on two different occasions. Like he witnessed it one night and then I witnessed it another night later on. This was in 2004. And I'll never forget this. There was a tree across the street at this old house that that was, it's a historic landmark now, so they can't tear it down. But there was a branch that I witnessed being pulled, like like somebody was pulling it down and it was about eight, nine feet up. And then it went, like flew back up and bounced. And Scorpion saw that too. When we started comparing notes about that property, because we saw a black dog, 
there go through a wall. And I'm not joking. It looked like it jumped down in, into this uh, kind of a ditch and then went through the wall. And I told Scorpio, I said, hey, uh, have you had anything weird happen over there? And when he started naming things, we both had that those two things happen. Would you say that that could have been some sort of like creature that maybe is cloaking or maybe it, it's interdimensional or something that pulled that branch? Is that possible? We would call that a translucent. You would call it a translucent being? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what we were looking at grabbing that branch, because, I mean, it looked like an invisible being. Like the picture I showed y'all earlier? Yeah. Oh, I saw, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. what you were seeing. Wow. Well, we, or we didn't see it. Yeah. We didn't see it. Yeah. yeah. And they're all different sizes and shapes, so uh, depending on the weight of it, and it could have just jumped off of that tree. Mm. Maybe or, it hung out up there. Yeah, or just or was just holding and coming down with it. Let that is it so weird that you because right just right now while you're talking, I think I've told the story on my show before too. I was parked there. Have I told this on the show? I think I have. Where mm -hmm. I was parked in front of that building, and I, it was it was almost time to almost quitting time. I mean, it was about five thirty in the morning. We got off at six, and there was a guy that walked like power walk every morning, like religiously, and he was walking. And uh, he looked like uh, the guy from The Price is Right. I forget his name, but he was always walking. And there was another guy, a Hispanic guy, that would come and sit every morning with his sack lunch at that bus stop. And it was like clockwork. And I worked there like five nights a week. And Scorpion worked the other two. And I'll never forget, I was sitting there one night, and it, it, something just went boom, like landed crashing into the back of my truck, like into the bed. And I got out of the truck and I was freaked out because my first thought was somebody jumped off the building and now they're in the back of my truck unalived. Okay. So I tentatively got out and I was like apprehensive and I walked over to the back and I looked and the guy that was walking, he was kind of standing. So him and the other dude that were there every morning, we just kind of waved at each other. They came walking over there to where I was at and they were like, they heard it. And they saw my truck go down. I felt it. I felt the pressure go up into my back. And I got out, and we all three looked, and we looked at each other, and I was like, I don't know these guys. I'd never, I met them that night, formally. Um, but we talked a few times after that, and every morning, you know. So one morning, about the, the next week, because that was my last day that week, the next week, the guy that was always walking, his name was Carl, he came up, and he says, any ghosts jumping in the back of your truck tonight? And I, and, and I always thought maybe it was like somebody had jumped or something at one point, and maybe that was what was causing it. But now what you just said – about how you guys saw the, the tree branches out here. I've wondered that before because I've seen things in the city, like in the city while we were doing security. Uh, one of them was Copper Tree's uh, apartment complex we worked at years ago. And I saw branches that looked like they had been torn and they were pretty high up. But I never thought that it would be a, that Bigfoot would be in town back then anyway. But knowing what I know now, and that's very possible. So you guys notice it's not that. possible. It is. It is. It's and even you look out even, your window, and their blinds are at the height that they can look in the second stories. Oh wow! It, 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 it's like if you only speak Vietnamese and you're walking around, you see these English letters. You, it would be really confusing for you. But once you know how to read English, you would understand what everything says. That's, mm, that's kind of like how yeah, they are. They see it. Is they just they can able they're able to look at trees. They're able to look at the ground. They just see it and they're able to recognize the signs. And it was really actually really impressive to see because you know what looked like normal trees to me. As soon as he pointed out one or two things, I'm like, you're right. That is really unnatural. And then I pointed something out, and he goes, Yeah, that you're, you're getting the hang of it. Like you see, yeah, what's going on right there? Because once you're that's you how the figure pictures out are. what's weird. You figure it out. Like the pictures that Bettina and Abe have. Like mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're looking at, you would just think this is nothing. But that, oh God, that picture that Abe put on there the other day, I'm not going to lie. There was several things going on in that picture at Elms Grove. And it, it was, it was, you know, of course we got attacked for, and I don't post pictures in my group. I have thousands. I don't post them because people will be like, oh, it's crazy. You're crazy. I don't feel like fighting. But if you know what you're looking for, you see it. Yep. You know what I mean? Just like when I walked into the Black Swan Inn and, and, and you know, of course, you know, Ken's like, this place is really haunted. Check it out. You know, whatever. Because Ken doesn't really believe like I do. Uh, so he's got that skepticism that he's able to fall back on. I walk in there. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And my wife said she felt like something was grabbing around the neck. I said, we got to get out of here. I, I mean, I yeah, even Anthony was feeling something. Oh, Anthony went in there. And he was just like, it, it, him and Ann both felt it. Yeah. It was like, they said, this is the portal room. And they were over there trying to communicate with stuff. And I'm like, uh -uh, nope, I'm good. Nope, uh -uh, uh -uh, not going to happen. 
But uh, you guys, though, you guys, when you see something, you know it's there. Like you feel it. When the average person goes out into the woods, they have no idea. They're just fumbling around. I mean, well, and even things like the anxiety, a lot of those feelings that people think are coming from in them are being projected at them. You know? yeah. So the anxiety, the uh, dread, the aggression, the, the horror, despair, those intense emotions, they're. Yeah. So it's coming from an outside weapons source. from them. Yeah. And so and so what, what, do you, what do you think of the nature of these things? What do you guys like? I mean, what are they to you? To to us, they're they're only a predator, but they're also um, here to steal energy, people's energy. Yeah, they want their not just their flesh and bone. They they want the energy, the soul, the essence, the essence of man, and that it changes them, but only for a short time. It doesn't like morph them into something else. But it, it gives them a more of a, a human kind of characteristic, more their gestures change, um, they walk different until that blood runs thin and then they go back to their animal kind of thing. So it's like a charge. And so they need to go get another one and another one. They do it with the animals too. Um, they'll take the essence of the animals also. But uh, they're just demonic beings, empty vessels that use human people to uh, take that soul, to fill that empty vessel, but it's only for a short time. Uh, they're not us. They'll never be us. They can't be us. Their DNA is multiple DNA. So as we say, and also in the book, that they're a combination of everything, but not a completion of anything. They can't be a man. They can't be a ram. They can't be a fish. They can't be uh, a bird. But all that together bonded by that that spider dna that binds it all together they can produce different things and those are like the the small ones the big ones the chupacabra the wendigo mm -hmm. it all goes on what they eat and what that next offspring will be if they eat more rams and moose and stuff you're going to get wendigo if they eat more coyotes and wolves you're going to have a dog man or a walking wolf Wow, so that, that and your in so your opinion, what you or what you believe, um, and because I know not everybody's going to accept this just right off the cuff, and I don't know what I believe because it's it's ever changing. Because I think like today, I thought I knew it was a ghost or something that fell back in my truck. And now I'm like re-questioning that. But do you for your for you, you think that the dog man is is one of these predators? It's an empty vessel of nephilim, right? Yes. Yeah, and they we would call it a predator Bigfoot hybrid. Okay. Just another mutation. So the dog man is a mutation of the Bigfoot. It's all they're all mutations of that original predator. Yeah, and then and that that's becomes, why everybody's right and everybody's wrong. They're trying to fit it into one this container here and that container there, but it's ever changing, ever wow. evolving. And that's also why the DNA test is always going to come up inconclusive or unknown. Unknown, unknown. It changes. It's always inconclusive. And when the the spider eat something that uses that DNA to produce an offspring. The same thing with the Bigfoot, but the Bigfoot has multiple DNA, so whatever it produces, it's going to be different every time. Uh, you can have those walker wolves or the dog men, you can, and they can produce that. They can have uh, a Bigfoot that's got wings with the legs of a chicken looking and hooves. You know, it could have horns with it. It's just... Whatever it eats, the DNA mixes, but it's going through multiple DNAs, so you'll never get too exact the lack. And people don't talk as much about those because they're just such weird stories that you can barely get them to talk about a typical Chewbacca looking. Oh, I know. You Wouldn't know, it? so it's, if you say a lion dog with a beak, and, you know, they're it's not going to believe that, but it is what it is. Yeah. It's very hard to get somebody to talk about I mean, not everybody, but you, you can get some people to talk about one of these Bigfoot type creatures. But when you get beyond that, yes, it gets more difficult. And 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 you said the same thing, Elle, at dinner. I think you both did. Uh, it was like they're like, "Oh, you're gonna think I'm crazy," but and then they always preface it with that, and then they kind of wait for your response. And and you know, sometimes I mess people too. I'll be like, "What the heck are you talking about?" You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, I'm just kidding. I'm like, no, for real. And then th- they'll be kind of stunned. And then I'll be like, I know I've seen one of these things and I'm not joking. And then I'll tell them. And then they're like, oh, okay, thank goodness. Cause not everybody that gives me a story has heard my show. A lot of times it's somebody that's heard my show. They will go get a family member or a friend and say, Hey, there's this lunatic out there talking about this stuff, <laughs> get in touch with them and he'll, he'll, you know, whatever. And so I, you know, I had this lady from Tennessee who was telling me about her Bigfoot encounter and she was like, you're not believing any of this. I was just quiet. And I said, no, not at all. And I said, yes, of course I am. Why would I be sitting here for half an hour listening to you tell me this story? And I, I just, and I said, I was joking. And she, I said, I am absolutely joking, but I am dead serious that I believe you. I know what you're talking about. And of course it was about uh, eyes, illuminated eyes she was seeing that looked like, almost like they were, bit, they were reflectors right. from a vehicle. And she thought, how's that vehicle so high up on the hill there? Uh, but that's another story. But you, we, you guys talked about that, too. We talked about it at dinner. One of the things I wanted to ask you, now you talk about the spider. And so we have told many people's encounters on this show where they will see these things sprawled out, crawling, uh, like, you know, on, on, on a couple of times we've heard, like, what, on their fingertips, right, Tony? No, it's very weird. It's very weird. and and Unnatural. They, un- unnatural. And, they, and you'll get the crawler. You'll get a Bigfoot. You'll get a dog man. Um, I don't think we've heard of a goat man spider crawling, have we? No. no I don't either. think so. But we've heard of all these creatures l- crawling. And you're sitting there going, like, what is that? Like, what is causing that thing to move so grotesquely unnatural? Now, when I talked to you and Ella the other, the other day, when we had the phone conversation a while back, you said it was because of the spider. Do you want to explain that? Well, the, the spider DNA is, um, is what changed all the good into the bad. Um, it started off with the, uh, the dove, which then we got the crow and the raven, the, the uh, falcon, uh, the fish were changed uh, from a regular fish to a shark, to an octopus, to crabs, um, the birds, the fish, everything had been infected by that DNA became predators and predators and multiple different kind of predators um the mixtures like the god ball the horned uh, goat or the ram god um that's a mixture of the spider dna with the serpent dna with the ram dna and the man dna it's all configurations that you're going to get multiple different kind of uh um hybrids is what they are but they're all predators, and that, that DNA is what changed everything from good to bad. Um, but we still have good here. I mean, we're all good people. Um, but we also have predator people. and Oh, yeah. And those predator people, those are the instigators, the infiltrators, the ones who see people doing good. They want to get in there and, and usurp it, it, take it. Yeah, and yeah, try to take that good out. Yeah, and replace just it just like that. a spider. Deceivers. Deceivers. Yeah, just like spiders. And, and and we talked about everybody. Like you said this to me, Jerry, when we talked when we were all having the conversation that everybody's afraid of spiders, whether they admit it or not. That's what you said, right? Yeah, it's uh, everyone has that natural fear because of the memory. We all know about the invasion, but we've been taught to forget it. And through the history, if you look in the history books and the ancient books, they were called pillars and comets and giants at that time. M. And the letter the M. The letter M. Oh, yeah. And it. Uh, we actually have a stone. Uh, if we got time, um, I was uh, doing some configuration on the alignments and the ley lines and and we was doing uh artwork for the missing and murdered and i was i was telling people they wanted me to do some art for them and i said i said well everyone else is going to have the same artwork it's going to be military kind of people in camouflage in the, in the woods um it's going to have you know the regular missing and murdered the same thing that everybody else does i said but mine's going to be different because i know i think different and so i was they talked me into it and so I started doing some artwork and I'll have to send that picture to you it's, it's, it was a layout of a reservation and I lined up the, the alignments I lined up the ley lines 
And then I noticed that this one was lining up with that church. This one lined up with that church. And then I put it into a triangle. And um, at the very tip of the point, I said, well, what I drew in this map is saying that there's there's something right here because this is the energy spot. So I went to that spot and I started looking around, started pulling up some leaves and debris and I found um, some duct tape, uh, bones. I don't know if they're human or not, but they were big bones. And I found um, a glowing green stone and you can see just the tip of it and it was nighttime, but this stone was uh, glowing green. And so I, I dug that one up and I looked at it and it was a baby's head. And on the side of it, it had the inscription, it. And it was three circles. And I looked at them, I said, well, this is the uh, alignment for uh, the solstice and the equinox ceremony or, or the times. The sun, the circle was up. Uh, it was. It looked kind of like a triangle, the because the uh, summer solstice will line up here. The equinox, it, you only need one uh, fire because it comes two times. The equinox, and it's out a little bit further. And the moon circle was back further because the moon is in the south and it's further back. But that that stone, I dug it up and it was. It looked just like a baby's head, and it went with the story of the spider, the legend of time, and the man-child that's going to be born. But the man-child was captured and put into the ground, and that's also how Earth is right now. It's captured. But I, I, what you were going to, what you were saying though, we were at dinner. And we were talking about the planets and how they've all been uh, woven into like sort of a spider cocoon. Now the the and these theories, these beliefs, or these uh, wh where where does this come from, Jerry? Does this come from the Choctaw belief, or what does that come from? A lot of it does, but it's in ain't every ancient manuscript. It's in every um, ancient uh, stone tablet. It's in the uh, Aztec sunstone. It's in the Egyptian Dendra zodiac. It's in the Voynich manuscript. It's in uh, Map of the Universe. It's in the old Ojibwe sky map. Um, it's it's on every temple, every pyramid. And this happened millions of years ago? Millions of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and through the evolution, when we first, when the people of the North at that time, uh, we call it the arrival of evil. But it didn't come as a, a human predator at that time. It was a blob at, in the beginning and through the ingestion of more man, it started taking more of a man-like form. And it's just a predator who's becoming more man-like to get closer to us, to consume us. But um, and in the stories, and with the Indians, it's, it's actual accounts. Um, but in some history books, it's, um, it's not an actual account. It's a story of what someone had told them. But the Indians still pass the stories on as this is the arrival evil. They're cannibals and they have a bot like fire that paralyzes. It's weird because some a, a listener of mine years ago who lived in Kentucky, she sent me something about a cave system and I can't even remember. I'd lost the the email that she had sent. And she was an elderly woman, and I remember her daughter or somebody reaching out to me saying that she was very ill and it was during COVID. So I don't know what happened to her. I lost touch with her, but I looked and I looked and I looked for the email and all I ended up getting was the initial email. And she says, I want to tell you, and it was just like a couple paragraphs. She said, I want to tell you the story and the history of the spider and how it, because we were talking about, it was the episode of giant spiders. And she said, I want to tell you how they uh, first came to earth She's like, and and I and I'll be real honest. When I first heard it, I was like, "What is this?" You know, I'm like, "This just, you know." And then when I reached back out to her, that's when after a couple of days of of because I wanted to hear what she had to say. I was, and then her daughter said she was ill, but she, I remember her talking in the email, just saying about the the beginning and and how, and then there was another guy who. Uh, emailed me a lot of information about how, and this is what he said. He said that this, there was a giant spider or spiders 
that actually live within the earth and that they control everything. And he, he even talked about it, calling it the World Wide Web was not by accident. And what he was saying was that they, they're actually, they've evolved to the point where they never leave their lair. There's a giant like hive mind going on and that they actually are cybernetic in the way that they're like cyborg. They're like part flesh, but they have actually grown, you know, mentally to where that they, when they repair themselves, it's like almost like uh, they grow appendages at will. And I thought this is really wild. It sounded almost like science fiction. But now when you're telling me this about the spider, just in the last month, you're about the second or what, third? Yeah, I think so. I like mean, the third person we've heard very... something about spiders. Yeah. Um, because I've talked about it on my show about how I don't like them. <laughs> and I really don't like them. And I've said it on my show before. I don't believe that the, like I look at the Black Widow, and I know there's people going to argue with me and say this and that, but the black and the red is universal, that it's, that's, yeah. you know, that's war. That's poison. That's darkness. And this thing is black and it's got red and it really does not need to be that potent of a venom. I mean, it's like this, the uh, Sydney funnel web. They say it's an accident that it has that much venom that it can kill 40 men or whatever. I don't believe that. I think that that thing is, is, is deadly. And I've seen how they will run toward people. Like they, they're not afraid. And so I, I'm sitting there going like, this is crazy. You know, and now you're telling me this about the spider. And when we first had our conversation, I know you weren't playing off of something you heard on my show. You were just telling me what you knew to be true. And so it's, uh, it's very telling for me now, you know, that, that this is something that, and I won't overlook any more emails from people who tell me. And you can't unsee it once yeah. you know that that, once you see the spider pattern in the Bigfoot, you can't unsee it every time you look in it. You can. You can just see the way they lay out their traps, the way they set up their traps, the way they hunt, the way they look, the no neck, the way you have to cut off their head. Like you were talking about the appendages, mm -hmm. appendages growing back. You know, they need to be destroyed completely. When he first found, he he was hunting for a, a five-foot spider when he yeah. found the Bigfoot. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Really quickly here, have you noticed though, like cause Halloween season is upon us and have you noticed how half of the decorations are just spiders and webs? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was driving the other day and there's a house and it's just covered in fake spider webs. And I'm like, that's scarier than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's scary. That's like scary, like a dog man scary. Like, what is that? Like, imagine having your house covered in spider webs. What you were saying though, Jerry, when we talked was, I asked you a question and I said, how, how did you have your first encounter with Bigfoot? And do you want to tell us that? Well, I've been doing a lot of studying and, and traveled, you know, the world. And uh, I'd found that there are spiders in here, you know, in, in like the cave systems and the mountains. They're even in the sewer systems and things like that. So I started looking for these things. I was up in the mountains looking for these things by myself, you know, the uh, Kaimichi, right? Kaimichi. And, oh, yeah. Uh, well, there in the Oachita, you know, different areas, Antlers area. And I'd finally, you know, come across those. And it's also in our documentary, I talk about uh, what we're looking for. And, you know, it can start off with little holes to puddles, and it'll, it'll tell you how big this, you know, spider is. And I'd found some little marks, and it, was, it looked like it would be about five foot tall. I mean, just the, just the holes. And the same spider, you know, um, pattern. So I was tracking that and looking for that. And that's, uh, and so I, I knew the tracks. I knew where I was going, but I didn't have equipment. So I went back and uh, waited a little bit. And I finally ordered a little handheld thermal and some cheap night vision and um, the uh, another recorder and some binoculars. And so I was... A friend of mine, well, at that time, he's not a friend anymore because, you know, I told him about the Bigfoots and he kind of laughed at me and, and and scoffed. So, you know, I, I said, well, you know, I've known you all my life, so uh, we're going to end our friendship here because, you know, I'm not lying. I, you know, I don't lie. And um, so I they asked me before that friendship ended, 
um, they had asked me to go hunting with them, and I don't, I don't hunt. I'm not a hunter. I, I track, and I will kill a Bigfoot or a walking wolf or something if they're there and they're, you know, the. But um, I'm not a hunter. I don't hunt deer or ant, squirrel or anything. But um, so I was, I went. They asked me to go hunting with them, and at that time, I just took a thirty thirty with me, and uh, I went out and. I do things a little differently being a tracker that I was riding uh, as a passenger on a four wheeler and um, we was coming up to the first deer, deer stand and my friend says about 50 yards in, you know, it's, it's a brand new one. It's up there. I said, okay. And I said, well, don't slow. I mean, don't stop, but just slow down. And uh, so he did. And I jumped off and I waited till, you know, they were moving. I was listening and whenever I track or go into the woods, I wait until the the wind blows. And when the wind's blowing, that's when I move. And so any movement's not going to be picked up. It's only if there's no wind and you're moving, it's easy to pick you up. And The Bigfoots do that, too. Yeah. With any sound, they use that. But, uh, you know, I made my way in, you know, uh, you know, unseen, unheard. I wouldn't, I never just walk in. Like you see on the researchers on TV, they're just walking in, talking, headlamps and stuff. I I go in about five, ten foot at the most, stop. But when I stop, I'm always crouching down. I'm behind a bush, behind a tree, something uh, to give me cover. Wait there, nothing moving. I'll do another five. and But then I, I finally made it to the uh, deer stand, got up there, got everything situated, I started running the thermals and I got some hits, but I was so high in the in the tree stand that I seen some squirrel nests. So I was thinking, well, maybe the thermals hitting on some squirrels because it was small. And I would do that periodically, and I'm just testing equipment out, you know, see how good it is and how to work it and everything. And I'd scan that area again. I'd do that every like 10, 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I noticed that those spots are getting bigger. And they're getting closer, and uh, but I was I was still thinking, well, maybe it's a it's a deer or something, because uh, that place is famous for deer. We'd we'd say we're going hunting for the weekend, but we'd only hunt the last thirty minutes before we went home. But and you know those days were crazier days. But and I'd already quit drinking by this time. But um, and I was out there and there was no, there was no hogs and it's famous. You got to watch out what you're doing out there. Cause they get very large and there was no hogs there. Um, just like there, here, yeah. there was no deer and this, this is famous for, you know, this place is called antlers. It's, you know, it's full of them, yeah. deer capital of the world, but there was nothing out there. And I ran that thermal again. And now this, these spots are big. So I pick up the 30, 30 and I'm using the scope and I look through it. And we've had problems with poachers before, and we've had to have shootouts out in the mountains with people coming through, and and we had to, you know, get them off the land and everything. And so I'm looking, and I catch a leg, but it's but it's it's not full hairy; it's sporadic. It's you know, you know it's patchy or kind of like it's got the mane, just not all mm-hmm. full hair. It's like, but you can see some, and and I followed it up, and I got to about the knee. And there was brush up there. And I was like, you know, I could shoot this guy's knee right out. And so I'm I'm looking at it going, but it looks humanish and I really don't want to blow somebody's knee out. So I just waited a little bit and I started running thermals again and I picked up the other ones. And now so now I'm picking up the binoculars as the camera. And it's got night vision also. And I started looking and zooming in and I got pictures of that one also or a couple of them and this one was probably about I'd say about nine ten foot tall it looked about a thousand pounds I guess it was very huge very very wide and there was a couple of them all stacked in together and um I panned again and there was an I caught a foot there was one that it looked like it might have just laid down knowing that I was in that area, but you could still see the foot. It was just barely behind a, a log, and I caught that also and, and took photos of that. But it didn't move. 
and you know, I got the weapon on it, and I know they're there, and I'm going, I'm looking at a Bigfoot, and I'm going, but it makes sense to be with the spider because it's it's an offspring of it. And I, and I was looking at the the arms and the legs, and I was going, it's got everything that the, the spider does. And then I looked around at the, where I was at, and I looked down, and there was a trap door. It actually had two, and it's in the film too, but it's got two uh, sticks here and one across here. But you could see that it was, you know, you could lift it up. And I looked around again at the deer feeder, and there was some blinds over there. And I seen a funnel over to my right, and I said, I'm sitting in a trap. Wow. They set a trap for that hunter. And if my other friends would have been in it, they would have never knew, or they would have been up there talking, uh, making noise, not paying attention. And so the Bigfoot, and well, the couple of Bigfoots, they didn't move, and I didn't move. And it was like, but I, I had a little cough, and I always get that if they're close, or I'll get a pain in my side, like a, a sharp pain. And um, so I had that little, you know, that little cough, and I didn't want to cough loud. And when I did that, from behind me, which I didn't know, but from behind me, I heard the teeth going real fast. Yeah, cl- clackering. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that. And I was like, so I'm, I'm completely surrounded. And but they're not moving. I'm not moving. And and apparently they knew that I didn't spotted them. And I had the uh, thirty thirty, and I was scanning. I put it on them every now and then just to see if you know if they were moving. And they they stood there. And we was probably there for about four hours. And then uh, it started getting dark, and um, my I could hear the four wheelers coming, and there was no deer. So there, nobody got a deer, and it's unusual for that. And this was the first time that they, the uh, friends at that time, drove the four wheelers to the deer stand. Usually, we meet at the road or or the path, but this was the first time both four wheelers came right to the tree stand. And um, and when that happened, you know, I I seen them coming. I completely forgot about the Bigfoots. Now I'm getting down, like we're going back, and then. Uh, my friends are going, well, let me check that thermal out. Let me look at the the night vision. And so we're out there in the dark, which, you know, is, is divinely orchestrated because they're looking, just testing it just to see what it looks like. But to the Bigfoots, it looks like they're looking for something. Mm-hmm. And they're running thermals and the lights are going everywhere. We didn't hear anything after that. And um, I just rode back with them and I told them, you know, you got Bigfoots out here. And I seen all the signs out there. They laughed, you know, kind of joked and said, oh, it's just a bear. Or And I said, no, there's no bear. No bear <laughs> there's nothing there. out yeah, here. Yeah. I've been through there. There's not, I don't think there's any bear. But I, I, that, going through that area, though, I've been through there two or three times and, and didn't stop or, you know, whatever, but driving through it. It's, it's actually pretty. Um, and it's it, when you're talking about the the what is it the Kaichita uh, 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 Mountains. Sorry, it's late. Um, you're talking about the area like what nor- just north of Tulsa, up near the Kansas uh, border. That no, you're talking it's, about? it's right next to the Mena, Arkansas, or the Arkansas border Poto area, Tallahassee, southeast. Yeah. Southeast, lower southeast, oh. Oklahoma. There is two similar names. There's yeah. the Wachita. Oh, okay. And the OHU. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So is the, one of them is above, isn't it above That's Tulsa to the, the right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not stupid. I <laughs> thought I was being dumb here because I drove through that area too. And it, and I've been through the Kaimichi and, and but it, it, they're both seem to be, um, it's just like the big thicket out in East Texas. I mean, there's, they're just, it lends to that. It just seems like I've never driven through 45 going from Houston to Dallas without seeing deer somewhere on the side of the road. I mean, there's just everywhere. And so it is pretty creepy. I'll tell you a, a kind of a, a creepy story that, that was given to me. And and this is, area has been talked about before on the show. But it was a guy that was telling me he was driving through uh, a junction. And he's like, in that area, there's mule deer and all kinds of stuff. And he says, dude, every time him and his wife had driven through there, going toward, uh, they were going to Van Horn, going out that way. And, and so his wife was from... You know, so we we they would go through Junction because I think they were coming from, uh, burn it, uh, 
I remember. Anyway, it's up here in the hill country. So he goes, we take, we go through in the junction. You know, you go through there. And he said, I never, I didn't see any deer the, the, the first time through there in, in eighteen years. He had never seen any. And then, lo and behold, his wife looks out the window and she's like, "Steve, look, look, look!" And he looks. He goes, and she there in the pasture, standing there, was a giant, hairy, reddish brown colored Bigfoot looking creature. And she was like, did you see that? And so it, it stands to reason if you're out there and you don't see any deer w- w- in a place that's littered with them. And snakes. And, yeah, and, and, and snakes and hogs. it's known for it's hogs. No, it's just a long piece of meat a snake is. Uh, Tuber protein. Yeah. And, and there's nothing there. And so then, you know, it, it was kind of freaking me out because me and my wife went driving out there and there's spice which she loves that. I call it Nellie's Drive. I take her out there when she's having anxiety, whatever. And she loves it because there's always deer everywhere, deer everywhere. And then the other night when I was with Tony, and then we look and we're like, there's no deer out here tonight at all. Remember? And then it was. Yeah, we saw like one deer. One no. deer and its, it's leg was all messed up. And then, and then, and then it went into the woods and then the whole track was no deer at all. And when we were stopping and we were looking at the water levels because it had rained. So we were trying to see like if the, if the creeks, because we're, we're in a drought. And, we, and my wife was looking at with the flashlight, and I'm not joking. We were on, she was looking at the creek, and I heard a, a twig snap. When we had seen no deer anywhere, you know, and I've seen packs of twenty hogs out there. And I looked, and, I, and of course, I joked with Tony. I was, later on, I said it's probably a Bigfoot, and Tony was like, "No, it probably was because there was right. nothing out there." Mm-hmm. And then at, at one stretch from from. Uh, I think from the cemetery or from the horse uh, ranch thing for the cemetery, mm. there was no sound. Yeah. We stopped at this one creek and my wife was like kind of wanting to look out at the, and I'm like, I just said, okay, we got to go because the bugs, there was no bugs. There was no crickets. It was cricket season. I mean, there was nothing. And it was like we hit a dead zone and it Almost was- Almost like there's a vacuum in yeah, your ears, exactly. like up that pressure. Mm-hmm. Well, and they, as soon they as- They eat worms, they eat crickets, they, they eat everything. Well, it was weird because as soon as we like, we noticed that and we're like, we were like, okay, let's keep going a little bit. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, we can't hear any, we can't hear anything. And then it was like a snap. We all of a sudden just heard them real quick. Turned, yeah. the, turned it back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we took off. And then as we got down, you know, that little spot where you go down the hill, you kind of get that rush because you go down. Mm-hmm. Um, that, all of a sudden, it was like, and then it just started making noise again. Yeah, and we were like, hey, Nelly, come catch up. And we had to leave her behind. So no. uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're like, well, you're the smallest. It's what the Holy. rules, I don't make the rules. I'm just saying, you're the you smallest. You got to push the truck, Nelly, if we get <laughs> stuck. That's the rule. Uh, it's 50-50. It's a marriage. A deal's a deal. <laughs> you know, but uh, no, it was, it was freaky. It was really freaky. Now, a friend of mine, he was camping out in South Padre, down down in the, the coast. And this is crazy. And, I, and it only, it's the only Bigfoot encounter I've ever heard of out of South Padre. And now he was telling me this. He just told me this a few days ago. He said, I was out there and I was sleeping. And I was in my in my uh, back of my truck. And it's funny because Scream just told me that he was Starscream. Uh, people that follow the show might know who he is. But he's heading out there. And I didn't want to tell him about this. But... Another friend of ours had said that he was out there camping and he saw this thing come up out of the water like it was swimming and he goes, it was hairy and it, it had like just fur. Now, he told me this story. He goes, dude, I wasn't going to say anything. He goes, because I thought you'd think I was crazy because I'd never heard you talk of a green Bigfoot. But I talked about it on the live, I think it was the live stream, wasn't it? It was from when I was down in San Antonio at the Paranormal Festival with Ken Gerhardt. And this lady came up to us, and she gave us her whole story. She gave me the the, the audio version. She told it. She was going to give it to another podcaster, um, but she gave it to me. And so she's so she's telling us that it was green, like the fur was green. The capuchin monkeys. When you look at those, some of those have that green tint to them, also, and they pick up the reflections of the things around them, also, mm-hmm. like yeah. a polar bear hair. We. We actually, ha- I don't know if we put this in the book, but it's in our documentary. Uh, we call it the Bigfoot Symphony mm-hmm. because the Bigfoots have, you're not just going to have one. They're, they're always in a troop. You know, yeah. if you see one, it's a decoy. If you, if you got the, see other ones, those are herders. It's the one on the left that you got to worry about because that's on your death side, your west side. Uh, 
And this is also in the book about your eyes that you use the right side to catch glimpses, blurs, and shadows and quick movement. The left side doesn't do that. The left side is more for focusing on what the right eye catches. So this this eye doesn't catch the quick movement like the it does, but it, it has to be visual. And if you put two hands back here and you bring them both up, you're going to see the one on the right first. The Bigfoot's also, that's called your west side, your left side, your death side, and this is also where the term comes to be blindsided because it's coming from the west side. The Bigfoot's who hunt and kill come and try to merge with your death side. That's the deadly one. That's the one that's hunting you. The one in front of you is a decoy. These over here are herders, but the one on the left is the one that um, is doing the hunting that's going to do the killing. But we call it the Bigfoot Symphony because they they are in groups and you'll have four or five of them that sound like crickets. You'll have two or three of them that sound like a tree frog. You'll have two or three of them that chirp like a bird. Uh, you'll have five or six that sound like the the, the crickets, I mean the, the locusts. And so when they get, they want to build your, your fear or to uh, let you know that they're there, they'll all quit making their their sounds together. And that's when the whole forest goes quiet. There's not any, there's nothing, if you've got a troop like that, they've ate every cricket, they've ate every worm, every bug, every Kind of like snake. the spider invasion. Yep, yep. Yeah, which yep. happened in, in, in your estimate millions of years ago, like- yep. You know, and of course, this is, uh, you know, there's a Hindu belief, and I've talked about this on the show, of the Yugas, and they're 4,320,000 years ago for an entire cycle. And each each cycle has so many millions of years, except for the, the Kali Yuga, which is the end. It has the least, um, which I think is 432,000 years, which is still really long. But th th this this invasion from these spiders this could have been something that happened many, many cycles ago. Like you're talking like how many millions? Uh, they actually created the dinosaurs and they are the cause of the Ice Age. Oh, really? Because the the, atmos <laughs> the atmosphere yeah, here. That, that is, that's correct. Sorry, one, real quick, Jerry, uh, your wife showed me the uh, picture of the green Bigfoot. That's crazy. She had a, green, a picture of a green Bigfoot. Oh, wow. That, that was at like the dog man. Choctaw Stickball Games. That looks like a at dog the stadium. man almost. So, so uh, before you go on about the spiders, I had a question. So my friend Steve that saw what he saw down in Padre, he saw one creature come up out of the water, but it was furry and walked like, what, what would that be? That is also in the book when we talk about water spirits and one of the, the trackers. Undine. Huh? The Undine. They call them the Undine. Uh, well, we call them water spirits. Yeah. But there, some of the Bigfoots have web feet. You know, they some of them have the beaks of the duck. Um, they all float. They all swim, swim underwater. But the water spirits, they hunt in the water. They're the hunters there. They'll get along the bank, which they use embankment blinds. You'll find a hole there, but it it closes from the inside, so it still looks like a bank until they're ready to open up and hunt. Like a trapdoor spider. Yeah, and they they'll hide under. Uh, embankments they'll pull debris down like they do the trees and they'll put mud on their face and or their 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 frontal area i hate to say face because it's, it's a stolen but and they'll put twigs on them you know just to blend in but they hunt they swim they they'll topple boats they'll drown people um and what they do is when they drown somebody they drink the blood you know, they can get that from underneath and you'll find a lot of holes underneath the the right side of the body and they can drink that blood because it's coming back up this way. Mm. So they just get in between there and drink that blood and they'll always store uh, a drowned body in the middle of a lake or a middle of a pond. It'll be at the very center, at the very bottom. They'll be held down with rocks and debris. If people come to look for that person, they will go get that body and put it in an area to where it can be found. And to everybody else who don't know this stuff, that they'll say, oh, he drowned. They don't know to look for blood loss. And everyone who has a drowning 
or someone who they find on the side of the road um, because they do just kill people on the side of the road and drink their blood, that if people would check for the the blood loss, which one of our trackers did uh, in Alabama, one of their friends, which she didn't get to tell them about this before, but she saved her kid's life by telling them about the water spirits. And that's also in the book of what happened. But um, her friend, and we had been talking about this on the air and, um, she had been with us for a while, and she said her friend's son had just drowned, and he's perfect health, and he goes to his place all the time. And we asked her, "Well, you got you got to check for blood loss." And she goes, "I don't know how I can do that. You know, I know the family, but I'll talk to him. Need an independent autopsy." Yeah, but she she asked them, and the and the the people actually looked for blood loss, and there was no blood. And that report came back to us, and we said, well, you know, they drank the blood. It wasn't a drowning, it was a murder. The wow. water side attacks are way up. We've been hitting heavy on that for about a year, yeah. telling people to be careful about the water side attacks, flipping the boats, and just like what you're talking about when he saw that coming from shore, they're good swimmers. All these yeah, it, it predators didn't attack are, him. are good sw- he, he just swimmers. just got off of the back of his truck yeah. and went inside the cab but and then drove away. But, it you know. will. They do attack, though. In yeah. the water too, people don't know that, or they'll chase them into the water till they get worn out, and, and just then, wait on the banks. Because I mean, if you got a bigfoot over there, over there, walk wolf over here, dogman, you know, nobody's gonna go out on this side. They're not gonna go on that side. They're gonna try to tread water as long as they can. Entertainment for them, and it can it gets that adrenaline going, lets the fear mm-hmm. go, seasons the meat. You know, yeah, that's true. I've I I I've, I. I've, Totally am on board with that because I believe that because somebody told me, well, I argue with people and they're like, well, why would they need to make us afraid? And then I got away. I'm like, yeah, you got away. Adrenochrome. Adre- adrenaline. Yeah. That yeah. adrenaline was, was, yeah. uh, yeah. And so I don't know, man, you hear so many things. And one of the things that I wondered about, I, I, I talked about this not too long ago with these mer type creatures that come up onto the boats in the Caspian Sea and they say that they take people and they drown them and then they take them to hell. Uh, and that's a legend. The Azerbaijanis believe that that's a, a real thing. Another form of marine spirit. It is. It, it, that's why I said undine. The undine is actually a name for water spirits. Uh, it's really, to me, the the savagery too that some of these people they get attacked by these creatures and then they make up some kind of story about how it happened um and i'm just not buying it there was one from the great lakes that, that this guy told lake superior and this guy said his grandfather was a, a merchant marine years ago uh, this is what he told me but he said that they witnessed like what did he say it was like 18 foot Dog man or a werewolf looking creature? Yeah, it was ginormous. It was yeah. it was huge, and it came up out of the water. And he said that it swam around. The, the, on the, they were on a freighter. Like it was a big, like a big ship. But he goes, it was you know about a, a quarter of the size of the ship, which is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, and he goes, and, and it was swimming around, and it was swimming around. And he goes, you could see its big old mouth. And he goes, and I, we we couldn't believe what we were looking at. This is what his grandfather told him, right? Uh, it's happened years ago, like in the 1920s, and then it just dove back down. And they were like a giant werewolf-looking dog creature, wolf creature, came up, said hello, and and dove back down. And now there are a lot of Native American legends of water panthers, these panther-type beings that come up out of the water. Um, in fact, Lake Texoma there are some weird, weird stories and legends that come out of there. I had somebody who told me that they were camping right there in Lake Texoma. I think they were on the east side of it. And they were saying that they saw a yellowish orb, ball of light, uh, come up out of the wait, Tony, was that that was when you were with me at Choctaw mm-hmm. Casino. Yeah. 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 And it was a there was a tribal police officer that we were talking to. He was a pretty cool guy. And then there was another uh, person that was sitting there, and they were, they said, my cousin had a really weird experience at Lake Texoma because we were talking about weird stuff, and this person eavesdropped. And I was like, you're being very rude. Uh, but then they gave me a story, so I, was, I bought him a drink. But now he told me a crazy story, though, or he told us a crazy story about a, a yellow ball of light coming out. About an hour later, they start hearing this hooping and hollering coming from the woods. They're right there on the shore at this point, and him and his girlfriend and his girlfriend's little brother were like freaking out, and they were like, "What is that?" And then, so then his friend and his girlfriend they had gone missing, so they they wanted to leave. 
but they didn't want to leave them because they had gone walking into the woods. And long story short, they end up being chased. And when they see what's chasing them, they saw different things. It was different things. Like they each saw something. Like one of them said it looked like a, a wolf on all fours, which it's well, – and then there was a discrepancy. His girlfriend was like, no, it stood up and it was on two legs the whole time. And they were arguing about what they saw while I was trying to interview him. And I'm like, I was like, when she came up to the bar and she's like, no, that's not what happened. You're telling it wrong. He goes, well, yeah, but Jimmy saw this. And so then I said, hold on. So what, what, you know, all y'all saw something different, but it, the, the, the bottom line was there was a bipedal hairy creature that ultimately that's the form that it took that they couldn't agree whether it all, they couldn't all agree whether it had a snout or not, you know? So what's going on with that? Why are they all seeing something different? Is it something that you're predisposed in your mind that they take that form or how, I mean, how does that work? What is that? Cause that's confusing. They can have multiple because of the multiple. De- let me, let me grab a picture real quick. First, I want to show you this real quick. Oh yeah, that's not our photo. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I that was given to me by Mark DeLeon. Oh, good, because yeah. I've been trying to find out where. Yeah, where that happened near Brian. Okay, we'll find out more about that later. Yeah, good. Okay, and then they may have multiple faces, like man, bear, pig. Mm-hmm. They got all that mixed up DNA, and it might look like a wolf on this side. It might look like a. I've heard of weird, like, boar-looking creatures and, and wolves. Yeah, just depending on which angle it's at. It's, they're monstrosities. They're Frankenstein's monsters. You know, and, and then people tell you, you know, oh, there's seven different types of dog, man. How about they're just all mixed up, weird? That's the thing. Um, One big basket of predators. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, they're all bad. A predator is a predator. It Does it matter what it's called? Like, we don't worry so much about getting into the details of putting... This one's called this and that one's called that sure. because they keep evolving. They keep changing. Why well, bother? Somebody else can try it's to keep track. With, yeah, it yeah, it's just a, a cauldron. And that's all the time we have with Jerry, Lead Tracker E, Pony, and Wolf. Don't forget to check out their book on Amazon, Predator, Bigfoot, and the Spiritual Warrior's Path. Uh, we're going to come back next Thursday with the second of this three-part discussion with them. Until then... God bless you, stay safe, and good night.